This tutorial is going to provide the steps to import data from your MedMont topographer to your iSpace software. We will also demonstrate the simplicity of designing an iSpace orthokeratology lens. Please join me in welcoming Darren Nigren, president of Custom Craft Lens, the U.S. distributor for iSpace. He is going to provide the demonstration. Thank you, Angela. On your screen, you see a MedMont topographer with the right and the left eye. We're going to import this topography, this patient's topography, into the iSpace software. So first, you'll select your patient and then select the right eye. And using the control function key on your keyboard, you're going to press that and select the left eye. When both eyes are highlighted, then you will click the iSpace icon located on the top of the MedMont software. This will take you to the iSpace software that you see on the screen. I'll also note that you'll have demonstration patients that come preloaded in your software so you can practice and learn how the software works. So our first patient is Demo Toric. The software is intuitive in that it works from left to right. So with our patient selected, we'll select right eye. Then we will select new lens. This will open a new window that has a drop down. With the options for ortho K or forge, the daily wear lens is bespoke, so we will select forge. The next step is to measure the HVID using the Placido rings. This is referred to as HVID or white to white measurement. Once you've measured, select save HVID. The next step is a drop down box. You will select Spectacle RX. The software will now design the lens. We'll break down this screen into four parts. The first being the upper left-hand corner. The lens type is a Forge Myopia 2, the flat K using the simulated Ks, the delta K, the amount of corneal cylinder, and delta sag at a nine millimeter cord. This is a, an important value to note because if it is over 35 microns, the software will default to a toric lens as it did in this case. This is also important because this will help determine which zones need to be toric using elevation data at a nine millimeter cord. For instance, a cornea with this amount of cylinder, the cylinder can go out limbus to limbus or it could go out to six or seven millimeters. This will allow it to determine again which zones need to be torqued and which zones do not. The HVID that we measured, the patient's spectacle prescription that we entered, the vertex distance, and the ocular refraction or manifest refraction adjusted for vertex. If it was a case where the patient had, say, a diopter of cylinder and you weren't sure if you needed a toric or a spherical lens, you would select this drop down and you could change it and design it as a spherical lens. But again, if this delta sag value is over 35 microns, the software will default to a toric design. Moving on down to the lens parameters, please make sure the show advanced parameter box is checked. This will allow you to go in and further customize the lens should you wish. In the upper left corner, you'll see the base curve optic zone radius. The next is the Z zone. This is directly correlates to the central tear film thickness that you see in the lower right hand corner of 18 microns. If you think of the letter Z, the bottom part is the cornea and the top part is the contact lens. The bar connecting the two is the sagittal depth of the contact lens on eye. 
So in other words, if we were to increase this by five microns, you'll see our central tear film thickness will change increase by five microns. The next value is the alignment curve. The alignment curve starts at the end of the reverse curve and goes out to where the peripheral curve begins. Aptly named because it is the, the curve that's most responsible for centration of the lens on the eye. The overall diameter of the lens, and then moving down below onto the second row, the base curve optic zone diameter. The BOZE is base curve optic zone eccentricity. This value is changed if designing a lens for presbyopic ortho K case or for myopia management. The edge width is predetermined but can be altered if you feel you need a larger or smaller edge width. The edge radius, again, we, if we look over here into the upper right-hand corner, on the right-hand side, you will see numbers. And if we were to change, alter the edge radius, you'll see the amount of tear layer at the peripheral curve increase or decrease based on the change that you make. The alignment curve eccentricity is used in more advanced cases for improved centration. Once you've designed the lens or made the changes, the desired changes, you'll click apply and then add to cart. You want to make sure this box is always checked to make the front, op the front zone of the lens spherical. In other words, if we uncheck this, it will make the lens a bitorque, which is not indicated for ortho K. Finally, click add to cart. If you had a left lens design, at this point you would design the left lens and also add it to the shopping cart. Once you're ready to place your order, you'll click Submit Order. You'll see a drop-down menu that has all of the available materials and color combinations. If you do not change it, the default will be Boston XO Green for the right eye and Boston XO Blue for the left eye. The box uh, here where it says intercommunication for distributor, if you need the lens in office by a certain date or say would like a drill dot on the right lens, any instructions for the lab can be typed here and will become part of the order. Moving down at the bottom of the comment box, you'll see a review button and an order button. If you click order, the lens will go straight into manufacturing. If you click review, it will go into consultation for a review of the design. Most practitioners when starting out will use this feature to have their lenses reviewed at the beginning. Once you click review, the order will be submitted along with the topography so consultation can analyze the case and offer suggestions if indicated. That concludes this demonstration. Thank you for attending.